Welcome to Depraved Society, where together we will explore our depraved society. Before we begin, please consider liking, sharing this video, and subscribing to this channel. It's free and it helps this channel grow. On today's episode of Serial Killers You've Probably Never Heard Of Before, we are going to be discussing Javed Iqbal. Javed Iqbal, also known as Kukri, was a rich Pakistani man who used his wealth to lure young boys. He would rape and murder them and confess to killing over a hundred boys. His victims ranged in age from 6 to 16. Javed Iqbal was born on October 8, 1956 in Lahore, Pakistan. He was the sixth child of Muhammad Ali Mughal, a well-off trader. I was not able to find any information online mentioning Javed's mother's name or any information on her. However, later in life, he claimed that he killed young boys to avenge his mother's death. We will get to that later. Not much is known about Javed's early years and even his date of birth is disputed. Some reports say that he was born in 1961. Psychologists have described Javed Iqbal as a pampered child who developed bad habits at an early age. When he was 22 years old, he graduated from government Islamia High School. He started his first business while he was a student at the Islamia College in 1978. His father set up the family business and bought two villas in Shadbag. Javed Iqbal set up a steel recasting business in one of the houses. This is when his attraction to young boys started. In the home, he lived with his young boys. He had been using different ways to lure young boys. He showed off his 200cc motorbike and had always liked to show off his wealth, even as a teen. The most effective method to meet young boys for Javed Iqbal was through magazines made for children. He would make pen pals with children through the magazines. After writing back and forth with the boys, he would request a photo from them. He would only choose the most attractive boys to maintain friendships with. He would spend thousands of rupees on gifts for them such as perfumes, tickets, and coins. When Javed Iqbal's family members started to move to Shadbag and become aware he was living with young boys, they became upset, but Javed would not allow them to interfere with his life or speak against the boys who were living with them. For several years, Javed resisted the efforts of his family to set up an arranged marriage for him. One day, in 1983, he shocked all of his family members by announcing that he had found a bride for himself. She was the oldest sister of one of the boys that lived with him. He did this, however, as a strategic move. He married the boy's sister because he was going to leave him. The marriage only lasted for a couple of months. He was married a second time, this time to the youngest sister of one of the boys that lived with him named Muhammad Iqbal. This marriage lasted longer and it was reported that he had two children with his second wife. Everything that Javed Iqbal did was aimed at luring young boys. With the money earned from his family business of steel recasting, he opened up a second business. He opened up the very first arcade in Shadbag. At the arcade, he would offer tokens at reduced price and sometimes even free. He would nonchalantly throw a hundred dollar rupee note just to see which boy would pick it up. He would announce that his money had been stolen and he had to search everybody. The boy who would pick up the money would be caught and taken to a back room where he would be sodomized. Javed Iqbal would then give the money back to the boy sometimes to make things right. He had complaints of sodomy filed against him several times since 1985. He was once arrested and sent to prison for six months, but this did not stop him. Once, he assaulted the son of a respected person in Chadbag. The case was taken up by the elders of the community. He confessed his crime to the Panchayat. 
which is the village council at Goldbag. He was given a stamped paper to sign, promising he would never commit this crime again. Photocopied letters were also sent to members of the community. He also was made to visit a hundred shops in the main market to apologize to everyone. This market square that surrounds the Mina e Pakistan was always packed with people shopping and pilgrims making their way to shrines. Javed would often scour the markets looking for young boys to become his lover and servants. The Quran forbids homosexuality and is even stricter when it comes to pedophilia, but many older men in Pakistan take younger boys to be their lovers and servants. After he was ousted for his crimes of sodomizing young boys, his arcade business failed because the parents did not want to send their children there. When parents stopped sending their children to the arcade, he opened up an aquarium. When that didn't work, he opened up a gym, all to attract young boys. He even opened up an air-conditioned school called the Sunnyside School. However, that business failed because nobody wanted to send their children there. He also opened up a store where he would sell items of daily use like soaps and shampoos for lower prices than his competitors. These businesses all lasted several weeks. David Iqbal would tell his neighbors that he was a police officer in order to stay under the radar. He even invested in a monthly magazine called Anti-Corruption Magazine that published the heroism of police officers. He was able to establish contacts within the police department. He interviewed many police officers, including high-ranking officials. In 1990, a man filed a complaint against Javed Iqbal for sodomizing his son. Shadbag police detained his father and his two brothers after they did not arrest Javed Iqbal. They were detained for seven days, but Javed did not surrender. On the eighth day, one of the boys was arrested from his house and was taken to a police station. Once Javed found out about this, he was upset at his family members and turned himself in to release the boy. When Javed Iqbal's father died in 1993, there was nobody that could stop the community of Shadbag from kicking him out. The community took this opportunity to beat and run him out of town. Iqbal received a generous inheritance after his father died of 3.5 million rupees. In 1995, he used this money to build a beautiful large house in Ranatown, Shadhara. The home had a pond in the basement and a swimming pool in the backyard. He loved flaunting his wealth, and he would drive around the city in a five-door Mitsubishi Pajero, along with a dozen young boys. He owned many cars. He sold his home in Ranatown, but it is unclear why. He moved to a new home in Fatagar, Shah Ghaziabad, where he opened up an arcade. In September 1998, Javed Iqbal and his employee Arbab were beaten severely and left for dead. They were beaten by another employee and a masseuse that worked there. Javed Iqbal was also robbed of 8,000 rupees in cash. He had severe head injuries and was unconscious at a Lahore hospital for 22 days. Arbab's family accused Javed Iqbal of raping boys and he was arrested upon release from the hospital. His family, not wanting to be burdened with his medical bills, sold his businesses, his cars, and his arcade. Javed was extremely upset at his family. His mother, upon finding out her son was a rapist and a pedophile, was overcome with emotion. Her health started failing and she later died. Iqbal started his killing spree in May 1999. He would later say he committed these crimes to avenge attempt at the life of his boys, the death of his mother, and injustice in his society. He pledged to kill a hundred boys as an act of revenge against the police. He complained to the police about the two employees that had beat him, but the police ignored him. Instead, he said, they charged him with sodomy. He decided that killing the children would be retribution. The same way his mother cried for him, he wanted to make a hundred mothers cry for their children. 
In 1999, David Iqbal had moved to the city streets of Lahore in the Punjab region of Pakistan. His wealth had diminished after his family sold his assets. He was living in a rundown apartment. He lived there for five months, and during those five months, he plucked young boys between the ages of 6 to 16 to his apartment. He often targeted young beggar boys that were working at the market of Minai, Pakistan. His modus operandi would be the same. He had young boys with him that helped him. He would have them accompany him to his home, and the victims would be given a sedative. As the sedative started to kick in, he would ask his victim about his life and his family. He would try to find out as much about his victim as possible. Some speculate this was to get the boy to let his guard down and feel comfortable. Others believe this was part of Javed Iqbal's depraved fantasy. He would carefully jot down the details of each of his victims and take their pictures. He would sodomize the boys chop up their bodies in pieces and dissolve the bodies in vats of hydrochloric acid. From there, the boys' clothes and shoes were catalogued and stored away. This would happen again and again until a hundred boys were murdered. Javed Iqbal had fulfilled his promise. In December 1999, after he completed his murderous revenge, he wrote a letter to police and to the chief news editor of a Lahore newspaper named Kawar Naeem Hashmi. In the letter, he confessed to raping and killing a hundred boys. In the letter, he claimed to strangling and dismembering the victims. He claimed to have targeted poor orphans and runaways in the streets of Lahore. He went on to say that he dismembered the bodies in vats of hydrochloric acid. He then dumped the bodies in a local river. The police dismissed his claims at first, but the news reporters were first to arrive at Javed Iqbal's apartment. There they found the depraved scene. Police and reporters saw blood stains on the wall, the floors, and along a chain with which Iqbal strangled his victims. They found pictures of his young victims in plastic bags. These items were neatly labeled and included handwritten details about each victim. They found partially dissolved remains of two boys still in two acid vats. The remains were deliberately left there for the police and journalists to find. He wanted them to know, without a doubt, that he was responsible for these crimes. In the letter, Javed Iqbal claimed that he was going to commit suicide by drowning himself in the Ravi River. The police sent out search parties to comb through the river with large nets, but his body never turned up. The Pakistani police launched the biggest manhunt in their history. Two of his accomplices were apprehended when they tried to cash checks made out in Javed Iqbal's name. They later apprehended two more of his teenage accomplices, accomplices in Sahawa. The four accomplices were in police custody for a few days before one of them died. The autopsy revealed that force had been used against him, but the police claim he jumped out of a window. A month later, David Iqbal turned himself in not to the police, but to the offices of the Daily Jang, which is a Pakistani newspaper. He walked into the offices looking disheveled and dirty. He had been living in a cave for the past month, surviving on eggs and apples. He was arrested and he requested that the army arrest him instead of the police because he feared the police would kill him. This is also why he surrendered to the newspaper instead of the police as well. Iqbal was sentenced to death. The judge passed the sentence stating, you will be strangled to death in front of the parents whose children you killed. 
Your body will be cut up into a hundred pieces and put in acid, the same way you killed the children. However, this was overturned due to the interior minister, Moinadin Haider. He stated that Pakistan was a member of the Human Rights Commission, so that punishment is not allowed. Iqbal hung himself in a cell before his execution. One of his accomplices hung himself as well in a nearby cell the same night. Yasir Hussain, who is a Pakistani screenwriter, is set to play the big Iqbal in a movie that is coming out soon. If you enjoyed this episode of Serial Killers you've probably never heard of before, please like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Also, please make sure you kiss your family members and tell them how much you love them. You never know when it will be the last time that you see them. Thank you and take care.